Now that we've studied some of the different laws and theorems of sequences, it's time to actually find limits of sequences. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to determine whether a sequence converges or diverges, and then we'll actually find the limit if it does exist. All right, so I'm going to be the example says which sequences converge and which diverge. Find the limit of each convergent sequence. I'm just going to warn you right now, I'm going to be doing six examples. I can in no way cover all the different types of examples we will have. So this is just a sampling of what we could find. So you'll notice as you're working through your assignment, um, there will be some that don't look anything like these examples. That's okay because each one will be treated a little bit differently, but this at least will give you a sampling of the different types of problems we might face. All right, so problem one, we're going to be finding the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, my sequence will be a sub n equals n plus 3 over n squared plus 5n plus 6. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is just what we did on the last chapter, see if we can plug in infinity. And I notice that if I plug in infinity to the sequence, I end up getting infinity over infinity. Well, that lets me know that I get to use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital, here we come. So we're going to be finding the limit as n approaches infinity. I get to take the derivative of the numerator, which is 1. The derivative of the denominator would be 2n plus 5. Right? Now if I plug in infinity, notice I get 1 over infinity, which is equal to 0. So the limit of my sequence is 0, which means that this sequence converges. All right. Um, the next one, let's say we have the limit as n approaches infinity. My sequence this time is a sub n equals 1 over 0.9 to the n power. Okay, I notice that if I plug in infinity for my n, 0.9 to an infinite power will actually be 0, and that's because 0.9 is smaller than 1, so it's going to decay instead of grow. So I'd end up getting 1 over 0, which doesn't allow me to use L'Hopital's at all. It means I need to try something different. So I am going to do something a little bit different, and you might not think about this, but maybe the next time you see a problem, you will. I'm going to make this 1 over 0.9 is 9 tenths to the n. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is if I have 1 divided by this number, I can actually multiply by the reciprocal. So that would make it 10 ninths to the n. And then if I have 10 ninths to the n, um, when I, since 10 over 9 is a number that's bigger than 1, when I take a number that's bigger than 1 to the infinity, I will end up getting infinity. And since I get infinity, we'll know that the sequence diverges. There actually is not a limit to that sequence. All right, example 3. Let's find the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, my sequence is going to be a sub n equals n plus negative 1 to the n over n. All right, first thing that I would try to do, I guess, would be plugging in infinity. My only problem is on this negative 1 to the infinity. Um, if I start finding those values, if I plug in 1, I get negative 1. If I plug in 2, I get 1. If I plug in 3, I get negative 1. If I plug in 4, I get 1. This is going to keep toggling back and forth between negative and 1 and 1, so it actually does not have a limit, so I need to find a different way to do this. I do notice that there's a plus sign in the numerator, so just like we did when we were taking integrals, I'm actually going to separate this into two parts. All right, and so n over n will just equal 1, which is nice, so I can just leave that alone for right now. For this one right here, I do notice that it looks somewhat like the sign problem that we did on the previous video, which using the sandwich theorem, so I'm actually going to use the sandwich theorem for this one. If you remember, the negative 1 is going to keep going back and forth between negative 1 and 1, so I can sandwich this in between negative 1 over n and 1 over n. And then we already found that um, the limits of as negative 1 over n approaches infinity is 0, and the limit as 1 over n approaches infinity is 0. And then we just get, so my 1 in the middle must also equal 0. And then I should have been put somewhere that we're trying to find the limit as n approaches infinity. So I'll just get 1 plus 0, so my answer will be 1 on this one. And since I got an answer of 1, that means that this sequence converges. All right, problem four. Let's just keep doing some more here. All right, let's find the limit as n approaches infinity. This time we'll let our function, our sequence be 0 0.03 to 
to the 1 over n. All right, and this one, it might look a little bit more difficult, but let's just see here. Um, we could use the limits that arise frequently, but I think it's just as easy not to. Um, if I let n approach infinity, I'll get 1 over infinity, which is 0. So I'll end up getting 0.3 to the 0 power, and anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So my limit is actually 1, which means this sequence converges. All right, problem 5. Let's find the limit as n approaches infinity. My sequence is the square root of n squared and the nth root of that. And if you'll recall, there was a limit that arose frequently if I had the nth root of n, but this squared is in my way, so I can actually rewrite this as the nth root of n and then square that because remember it doesn't matter whether I do the root first or the power first. And then we actually have a formula for this. We know the limit as n approaches infinity of this one due to that limits that arise frequently frequently will be 1. So we'll get 1 squared, which equals 1. So this one, we get a limit of 1. And this also, again, means that my sequence converges. All right, last example that I'll be doing with you. We have the limit as n approaches infinity. And then my sequence is going to be a sub n equals, again, we're going to have an n through, and we'll have 3 to the 2n plus 1. The problem on this one differently than what is on 5, we don't have an n as a base at all. We have a 3 as a base. So we're going to need to treat this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do on this one is we have a 3 to the 2n plus 1. And the nth root would be the same thing as the 1 over n power. And if I have a power raised to a power, I can actually multiply the powers together. So I'm actually going to distribute the 1 over n to both parts. And when I do that, I'm going to get 3. Um, 2n times 1 over n would just be 2 and then plus 1 times 1 over n would be 1 over n. Remember, my final goal is to find the limit as n approaches infinity. So now if I plug in infinity for n, 1 divided by infinity would be 0. 2 plus 0 is 2, so I'm really going to have 3 squared, and that equals 9. So once again, my sequence converges. Okay, so hopefully you've got your feet a little bit wet and we can find um, whether sequence converges or diverges and find the limit if possible.